Inertia is an object's resistance to change in motion, and is dependent upon the mass of the object. We also define that change in motion as acceleration. In order to cause an acceleration, we need to apply a force. Now it stands to reason that a small force would result in a small acceleration, and applying a larger force would cause a larger acceleration. So we can say that acceleration is directly proportional to the force applied. Mass is the other factor involved in a change in motion. An object with a large mass is going to have a smaller acceleration than an object with a smaller mass. Mathematically, we can say that acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. The magic of algebra lets us put those two ideas together and gives us the idea that acceleration is equal to the force applied over the mass of the object, which gives us Newton's second law in mathematical form, more commonly written as force equal to mass times acceleration. The problem is that this statement is very misleading because it really does not give us the entire picture. What if you have a book sitting on a table? Is there any acceleration? There's not. So according to this statement, then there should be no force acting on the book either. However, we know that there are forces acting on the book. The force of gravity is pulling the book downwards. The table is pushing upwards on the book to counteract gravity. So there are forces there. But when we add them up, they all tend to counteract each other. So a better way to state this is that the sum of the forces, or the net force acting on an object, is equal to its mass times acceleration. This makes more sense now because the total of all the forces can be equal to zero. This fits nicely in with our equation with our acceleration of zero. This situation, where acceleration equals zero, and therefore net force equals zero, is referred to as equilibrium. This can occur when the object is not moving or when the object is moving at a constant velocity. Now we are also interested in the units that are involved when forces are applied. The net force is equal to the mass, which is measured in kilograms, times the acceleration, which is measured in meters per second squared. As you might imagine, this becomes cumbersome when we speak and write about forces. As a result, the units have been given their own name of Newton. So if we were to accelerate one kilogram of mass at a rate of one meter per second, that would equal one Newton. So suppose that the net external force exerted on a lawnmower is 51 Newtons parallel to the ground. If the mass of the mower is 24 kilograms, what is its acceleration? So we have a net force of 51 newtons being applied parallel to the ground in the direction of the motion. This means that gravity is balanced by the upwards normal force and any friction on the opposite direction is overcome by the applied force. We also know that the mass of the mower is 24 kilograms. A good place to start is with our second law equation. And when we compare to what we know, we like it even more. Rearrange that equation to solve for the acceleration and plug in our force and mass to give us an acceleration of 2.1 meters per second squared. Now example problem 4.2 in your book talks about a four rocket propulsion system with an initial acceleration of 49 meters per second squared and a mass of 2100 kilograms. We want to know what is the force exerted by each rocket if the friction is 650 newtons. So we have our four forces acting on the rocket. Since there is no vertical motion, the gravity is balanced by the normal force, so we can ignore those in our net force calculations. The rockets are applying a force that is pushing the rocket to the right, and friction is applying a force pulling the rocket to the left. We are looking for the force, and we can find the total force pretty easily based on the mass and acceleration we were given. If we look at our force equation, hopefully it stands out that the force part is the net force. We have to take into account that there are two horizontal forces acting in opposite directions. So we need to subtract our friction force from our total force to find the thrust force of the engines. This gives us a total force from the engines of 100,150 newtons. Now the question actually wants to know what is the force of each engine. So since there are four of them, we need to divide that total thrust by four. So each engine on our rocket applies a force of 25,000 newtons.